Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at another older Mac, and this time it's a mid-2014 Retina MacBook Pro with the integrated graphics. So here we go. So as usual, I'll have all the specs on this machine down in the description. I'll also have a link that'll take you out to the Every Mac website that shows you more details on the machine and a link that'll take you out to eBay if you wanna see the current going rate for these machines. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into the specs. So like I said, this is a mid 2014 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's got a 2.2 gigahertz fourth generation i7 processor, 16 gigabyte DDR3 RAM, 1.5 gigabyte Intel Iris Pro 5200 graphics, and 256 gigabyte SSD storage. Now that Intel Iris Pro is the integrated graphics, there's no discrete graphics on here, so there's no AMD or Nvidia card on this machine. Taking a look at the machine itself, on the right side we have one USB 3.0 port, a full-size HDMI, and an SDXC card slot. On the left side we have that awesome MagSafe connector that I wish Apple was still putting on their machines, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, another USB 3.0 port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now obviously what dominates this laptop is that beautiful 15.4 inch retina screen. It's got a resolution of 2880 by 1800 at 220 pixels per inch. This display is beautiful. And up above that display is the 720p eyesight camera. Uh, you know, it's a eyesight camera. It's nothing special, but it gets the job done. As far as connectivity, this machine has 802.11 AC and Bluetooth 4.0, both are very solid, really good signal strength, and I've never had a drop signal on either of those. If you want more connectivity options, you can get adapters for either that USB 3.0 port or the Thunderbolt 2 ports. Now, one thing that's great about this machine is it's still supported by the latest operating system from Apple, which at the time of this video is macOS Mojave, that's 10.14, and that support extends into the hardware in some respects as well. Now, as far as performance, this thing works great on day-to-day -day activities, browsing the web, listening to music, even doing stuff like GarageBand or any of the other included apps or Apple available apps. Everything works just great. I never had an issue with anything slowing down, not working correctly or crashing. And that goes for the operating system. Again, at this time of this video, it's Mojave. Everything just works phenomenally well. Okay, so we got to talk about gaming and this is not a gaming machine with that integrated graphics. It's not a good experience. If you're playing older games like Portal 2 or Minecraft, you know, those work pretty well. Um, if you're playing anything newer, you're not gonna have a good experience. I tried a few games, I tried Fortnite. So setting the resolution down a little bit to 1600 by 900 and then making sure the shadows are off makes it actually very playable on this machine. Even at high settings, I was able to get right around 30 frames per second. If you set things lower and mess with the settings a little bit, you can bump that frame rate up. So it's, it's playable, it's not an ideal experience, but in a pinch, you can actually have a pretty good match on this machine. Now, one thing I really wanted to try out was video editing, and this is one area that I was really, really surprised with this machine. And I was so surprised because this doesn't have the dedicated graphics, it just has that integrated graphics. But within Final Cut Pro 10, 4K, MP4, H.264 files right off of my camera, which is a horrible format for video editing, I can dump them right into this Mac, load them into Final Cut Pro, and everything is like butter. Everything is totally smooth, scrubbing smooth, playback smooth, transitions, effects, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff works great. Never had it slow down. Uh, even the render time is not bad because it's got that super fast processor. If you're adding a lot of effects, um, it's gonna slow down a little bit because you don't have that dedicated GPU. Uh, that's gonna add to your rendering time a little bit, but the actual editing process within Final Cut Pro is an absolute joy. It worked great. Now, on the flip side of that, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere, not so much. Uh, I had problems with playback and scrubbing in both of those applications, not a good experience. So if you're getting this machine for video editing, make sure you're gonna be using Final Cut Pro. So to answer that question, is the 2014 MacBook Pro still good? I would say yes, it is still a very good computer. There's some caveats to that. If you're a gamer, if you're somebody that's editing in video in something other than Final Cut Pro, or you're doing any other heavy GPU intensive tasks, this is not the machine for you. It's just got that integrated graphics, so those kinds of tasks it really struggles with. 
Who this is really good for is somebody that does general computing tasks, office work, a student. This is a great machine for students. Somebody that needs to be able to carry around a machine that they can do you know, any general computing tasks in a really lightweight, travel-friendly computer. It's got all kinds of ports on it, so you have great connectivity, and it is a fantastic machine overall. It's just not good for that GPU intensive stuff. So hopefully you found this useful and informative. Please hit that like button if you haven't already. If you found it really useful, hit that subscribe button, and I'll be doing more videos like this in the near future. And come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Love meeting new people out there and saying hi to them. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.